Hey guys, Mr. Decker here. This is a brand new, uh, well, not a new unit. It's a, the same unit as it has been. It's unit three of computer science discoveries on code.org. But the big important thing is they've made a ton of updates since the last time I made a video series for this unit. So let's go ahead and update this video series. All new, all new lessons. We'll do all the challenges. It'll be great. Let's get to it. All right. Bubble one, lesson three, drawing in Game Lab. It says, welcome to Game Lab, where you can create interactive animations in games. You've already practiced the basics of putting shapes on a grid. And in Game Lab, you'll do the same with the display area on the left. Here's your display area. It says, do this. Look at the line of code in the workspace below these instructions and discuss with your partner where you think the shape is going to be drawn on the grid. Step two, we're going to write the prediction in the text box below. We have a handy dandy text box right here. And then we'll click run to run the program and see what happens. So we get to see if our prediction is correct or not. So right here, I'm going to click show grid. That turns this grid on up here. And the first thing I want to point out is that zero, 00 on this grid is top left. Now, if you've taken a couple math classes before and you've done some plotting on graphs, you're probably used to zero, 00 being down here on the bottom left. But for the purposes of this entire unit, zero, 00 is on the top left. All right. So this piece of code right here says rectangle. 100, 100. So because I know a little bit already, I can go ahead and tell you, right, that this is x100 and this is y100. So if I'm looking for x100, x is, a, is telling me where I am left to right, and y is telling me where I am up and down, if you're following closely. So to find 100, 100, I'm trying to find the intersection of x100 and y100. And because they gave us a big round number, it's easy. So x100, y100 is right here in this little uh, corner right there. So boop is where that would be. When I click, you see the big red circle. All right, let's type our answer out. Uh, we're going to say top left is where that, uh, oh, wait. What is going to be there? What shape? What do you? Where do you think the shape will be drawn? Yeah, that's the question. Where do we think it's going to be drawn? We're saying top left, and then we'll run it, and I bet you there's the shape, right? So it is well in the left or left top quadrant, I guess, if we're thinking about this in quadrants. All right, let's move on. Let's go to bubble two. All right, so on bubble two, it says this level follows a video that you may have watched with your class. If you missed the video, you can watch it in the help and tips tab of this level. Uh, it says do this. Here's the same line of code from the previous level. Change the numbers inside the block, then try running the program again. Try to place the rectangle near the bottom right of the screen. So let's turn that grid on back all right, you can flip that on and off like a light switch. So if I run the code right now, there's my shape, right? It's just a gray rectangle, which is kind of like the default shape that's going to show up if you if you just throw this up there. All right. Um, it says try placing the rectangle near the bottom right of the screen. So I want to get it right here. One thing to note when you're placing a square or a rectangle shape, on the screen, the 100, 100, right? The X and Y location is going to be the top left of that object. So if I change this to, let's say, and see, it tells me right here where my cursor is pointing. So let's do 350, 350 to get it all the way down into that corner. So I'm going to click into that space right there, type 350. And then I can either tab over or I can click into this space 
the type 350. If I reset and then run it again, it updates over here what I've told it to do. So the beauty of programming is the program does exactly what you tell it to do. So if you're like, dang, this thing isn't working right, it's because you told you gave the computer confusing information or not quite the right information in order to get the result that you wanted. So to get the result that you want, you got to tell the computer exactly what you want. And that's what programming language really is. It's you communicating to the computer what you want it to do. All right. So let's finish there. Continue. That puts us on level three or bubble three up here. And you can see as you make progress through these lessons, right, it'll turn a bubble green when you're finished with it. It's a helpful way of keeping track of your, pro your progress through a lesson. I think that's pretty cool. All right. So on this one, it says place squares in corners. All right. A big part of using Game Lab is understanding position. Remember that you can always turn on the grid, right? There's the grid. Uh, or hover with the mouse to help with X and Y position that you want. Do this. It says place two rectangles in exact in exactly in the corners of the screen, just like the picture. So on this one, we actually have a picture to go by. That's a visualization of what they're asking us to do here. It says you'll need to drag out a second rectangle block. And to do that, you just hover over it. It turned, Your cursor will turn into a hand. You click and drag that rectangle block out. And for this one, uh, since we want one up here, and we now know that the top left corner of the rectangle is the X and Y position we're giving it in these parameter then that means this would be zero and this would be zero, right? And then when we run it, there it is. The second rectangle has a default position of 200, 200 that we want to change. And we learned on the last bubble, 350, 350, we'll put it down here into this corner. So reset, run again. And now we have exactly what we wanted or exactly what the lesson wants us to do up here. So we'll finish and we're on to bubble four. This level follows video that we may have watched, but for the purposes of this video, we are not going to watch that video. We're going to go through the lesson. So this one says fill color. You can also make your rectangles different colors with fill. Uh, F-I-L-L, -L, not fill the person, like P-H-I-L-L. -L. Uh, let's see. It will set the color for every shape that comes after it in the code. All right. So with this code, we should have two blue rectangles on the screen. Yep. All right. And now under do this, it says, look at the code that sets the color, which is this fill line right here on line two in the code. And that's saying fill blue. And then it's telling the computer to fill everything that comes after it with blue. So until you update a fill color, like adding a new fill down here or changing the color of this, right? Say change that to green. Now it has a green box. So this one, uh, it looks like it wants us to do yellow, but let's read the instructions before we blaze ahead. All right. So we looked at the code that sets the color, which is here. And it says change the co color from blue to yellow. So we'll do that by selecting that drop down. And then add a new square to the image. All right. So it says down here, add a new square to the image. So we'll add our new square down below that. It will automatically add that to 200, 200. But I really want to go for gusto here and make it look like this. So let's figure out, let's turn on the grid and see where that should be. It should be right there at 100, 200. So we're going to change this 200 to a 100 leave that at 200, reset, run, and that's it, right? We've recreated what they wanted us to create. Excellent work, everybody. Let's move on to bubble five. Bubble five, what you got for me? All right, in Game Lab, it matters what order your code is in. Absolutely, it does. And new shapes are drawn on the top of the ones that came before. 
covering up the shapes that are drawn first. You can see the difference when you use more than one color in your code. So in this one, uh, looking at the code down here, we have a red rectangle or red square being drawn and a blue one being drawn, but the red one is being drawn first. So an important thing to remember when you're coding is that the computer reads everything in order, uh, top to bottom, just like you do, right? Top to bottom, left to right, just like we all read. So right here, we have fill red, that's creating that and drawing that uh, square or box or whatever you wanna call it first, right? Drawing that red rectangle first. And then it draws the blue one at 200, 200 right on top of it. So if we moved this up here just to demonstrate, reset run, now it's drawing the blue one first and the red one sits on top of it because it's being drawn second, right? Again, computer reads the code in the order that you tell it to, and that order is top to bottom. Okay. It says change the red rectangle's color to green. So let's pull this back up here, reset this, run it. So that's back to normal. Change the red rectangle's color to green and then change the order of the code so that the green rectangle appears on top. So now we can lasso this code instead of grabbing one piece and moving it, we can lasso it. We can click out here in the white space, hold down that click, highlight both of those, and then we can grab both and move them where we want them to be. In that case, drawing the green one after the blue one is drawn. So it looks like this up here, right? In the example. Good work, everybody. Let's go to bubble six. And on bubble six, it says you can use ellipses to make a circle. So yes, this ellipse block right here and right here, that's a circle. So rectangle makes squares or rectangles, that sort of shape. Ellipses make circles, ovals, and so on. All right, do this. Look at the code that makes the ellipse, which is on line two in the code, and the parameters say x100, y100. And it says add a new ellipse of a different color. So we'll add a new ellipse block. Whoop. But just putting that at 200, 200, it's going to be the same color. So add a new ellipse of a different color. In order to do that, we need to grab a fill color block, put that above this ellipse, reset run. And just to be particular about it, they've got an orange ellipse here. So I don't have orange from the drop down. However, I can take yellow out, making sure that I don't get rid of those um, quotation marks. And I'm gonna type the word orange, O-R-A-N-G-E. And then when I reset and run this now, I have an orange ellipse or an orange circle, just like they have in the example. I'm happy with that. Let's move on to bubble seven. Let's move on to bubble seven, internet. All right. Let's do these activities on bubble seven. So first we're going to be debugging a car. So let's jump into 7A. Debug this car, shall we? All right. So we want our car to look like this over here when I run it. Uh, it's almost correct, except for the ellipses are being drawn first. And I want the ellipses to be drawn last so that it looks like the, the wheels and tires are on the exterior of the vehicle and not underneath it, weirdly, right? I mean, tires are underneath a car, ideally, yeah. Uh, however, we want them to be more visible. Okay, it says debugging, fix a car. Oops, the red part of this car is hiding the wheel. Fix the program to match the picture on the right. So matching this picture, read the code that makes the car. 
right? So line one, we're making these two ellipses right here gray, or line two, sorry. We have a fill dim gray, and then we have the two uh, ellipses, which are the tires. And then we have a fill red, and then all of these rectangles being drawn in their positions to create the body of the car. All right, so as we've learned already, we know we can lasso these three lines of code by clicking out here, holding that click, dragging over those three lines of code. And then we can grab it with our cursor, put it on the bottom of the code, reset, run, and now it's exactly what we wanted. So remembering that it's important, the order of the code for when you're drawing your animation or your sprite on the screen. Let's finish. And now let's do 7B, debugging the flower. So it says, uh-oh, the flower is missing some petals. Let's see what that looks like. Oh yeah, we, so we need to move these ellipses up to the flower. Uh, so it looks a little bit more flowery, right? Bring them together with the center of the flower to recreate the picture on the right, which is here. And look at the code that makes the flower. So we have fill purple on line two. And then we have one, two, three, four, five ellipses making up the flower petals. And then we have one ellipse and a fill yellow on lines eight and nine, making the uh, center of the flower where the pollen lives, right? Let's see. So we need to get this one and this one. No, I'm going to turn on the grid. Uh, this one and this one back to the flower. So something to note here, when you're making an ellipse, the center of an ellipse is the X and Y parameters. So for this one, 238 or 240, 300, that's, line, that's this line six ellipse. So 300 Y, right, is why it's way down here. Remember Y is up and down, X is left and, left and right. So I want the center of this ellipse to be about right here. So let's try 220X, 226Y. So we'll try 220 and 226. Reset run. All right, I like it. And then for this one, which lives on line seven over here, 300X, 200Y, we want to move that to about right here. So 236X, Y 184. So 236, 184. I'm trying to remember that. 236, 184. And then reset run. And there it is. It's not perfect, but I like it. I'm going to do one thing here, and that is pull this one out a little bit. Uh, eh, you get it, right? Yeah, I get it. It doesn't have to be perfect as long as it looks like a flower. And in this instance, it definitely looks like a flower. Continue. Let's do C, debugging the stoplight. Probably would be a bad thing for getting to school and uh, home from school if the stoplights needed to be debugged while I needed to use them. So that's kind of an emergency situation. Let's check this out. All right. This stoplight is all mixed up. Fix it so that it looks like the picture on the right with red on the top, then yellow, then green at the bottom like every stoplight I've ever seen, and read the code below. All right, so it's intended to create a stoplight, but the colors are incorrect, right? Red needs to be at the top. So let's grab this. Um, well, actually, we won't grab that. What do we need to do exactly? Let's see. The top one needs to be red. So let's change this to red. Reset run, but now we have two red lights. We want the middle one to be yellow. The one that was already red can be changed to yellow. Reset run. And then we still have another yellow here that can be changed to green. Reset run. And then this fill green down here is unnecessary code. Don't even need it. 
to complete the project. All right, let's finish and continue. Okay, uh, drawing a car. Re recreate the car from the last lesson using code. Okay, this one's going to take a minute. Okay, so let's pull this down so we can see our sample. We're going to use the rectangle and ellipse blocks to draw this car. So we need five rectangles top one's blue. So let's go ahead and do fill color, change that to blue, I just typed it in. I need two rectangles. It auto automatically defaults there. I'm going to turn on the grid. Let's put this car right here. So we'll do 150, 150 for the first one. Not 250, 150. Come on, man. There we go. And then uh, let's run it. We want the second one right here, and that's going to be at 200, 150. So we only need to change the Y parameter for that one. All right, we're on our way. And then I'm going to add another fill color for the green, the four green rectangles. Go ahead and grab those. And then we want this one to be 100, 200. We want the second one to be 150, 200. The third one, are you seeing the pattern? Should be 200, 200. And then the last one should be 250, 200. We're following the pattern. Reset, run. Okay. Now, the last thing we want to draw are the tires. We're going to make two red tires. So first, fill color, red. And we're going to grab an ellipse. And this one we want to be about right here. So let's put it at 150, 250. And the other one we'll put right here at 250, 250. Reset, run. It's beautiful. We've made a car. Let's take our prototype to Ford and see if they'll uh, start creating a car with red tires. <laughs> All right. Shape of shapes. Make a triangle out of circles. We can do that. We got this. We can make a triangle out of circles. Totally. Totally. No problem at all, right? Yeah, totally. Let's see. Give me one second. I'm just going to hit pause up here. And we're back. All right. Sorry about that little pause. It was a lot briefer for you than it was for me. All right. Bought more brief, briefer, more brief. Probably the correct grammar. Trying to teach the kids. Got to get that grammar in. Good job, Mr. D. All right. Let's practice shape, location, placement, and order of our shapes by drawing this triangle made out of circles. All right. We'll do that. So the first thing we need, it says do this. Use the fill block color to make your shapes purple. So fill purple, purple. And then use 12 ellipse blocks to create the triangle shape in the image to the right. Okay. Pay attention to the order of your ellipse blocks to make sure they're overlapping, overlapping one another as they appear in the image. And for example, the circle at the top of the triangle is on top of all the other shapes, which means it gets drawn last. Okay. Um, so it looks like our first circle is this one down here. No? Which one is the first one? That one's the first one? These three? This one's the first one. All right. So we know we need a, how many ellipse blocks did it tell me that I need? 12. All right. So to begin with, we have this one. And... I think that's going to be that one right there. And then the order that they're drawn is like this pattern. So we start there at 200, 200. So the next one, to move it this way a little bit, let's do 210, 210.
Reset run, just constantly testing the code. Let's move that a little further out. Let's do like 225. 225. You can always play with the code to make sure you're getting the result that you want. And since we added 25 to that one, let's add 25 to this one. So we have 250, 250. Right? Okay. And then let's add 250 again, or add add 25 again, I mean. So this one would be 275, 275. And that continues our line coming down that way. Now we've got to start tracking back this direction. So we're going to be subtracting now. So from 275, 275, uh, we're going to uh, 275y for a while. Let's subtract 25 from the x. So, oop, all right. And let's continue to make our way left. So, 225, 275. And it looks like they used they have one, two, three, four, five going across the bottom. We have three so far, so we're adding two more. Go ahead and pull those out. 200, 275. And then this one, 175, 275. Reset run. All right. And now we're going to go up. So we're going to go one, two, three, four up, and we'll stick with our 25 at a time rule. But in this case, this number is going to increase. Uh, no, it'll stay at 175. That's X. And then this one should now decrease. So maybe 250, 175, 250. Perfect. All right. Sticking with 175 here. Let me reset so we can see the code. 175. Click in there. Ugh. No. Eventually we'll get this. Or not. There it is. Okay. 175, 225. Okay, that's two. We need two more. All right, so 175, 200. And 175, 175, and that should get it. Woohoo! It's perfect. It's exactly what they did over here. All right. Let's finish and continue. And it looks like we're done with the challenges here, or the practice bubbles. A, B, C, D, and E. Yep, we did them all. Let's finish. And that's going to put us onto bubble eight. And on bubble eight, it says, often code doesn't work the first time it runs, and programmers have to debug it. The code below is supposed to make the picture on the right, but the programmer got confused about which order the code should be in, as well as how to put a square in the right place on the screen. Do this. Look at the code in the workspace. OK. And then change the code to make the picture on the right. So we're making this sort of flower design here with a purple square in the middle. OK. So let's run this. It says we don't need to add any new blocks to the code area. We just need to arrange, rearrange some blocks and change some of the values. OK. So my rectangle is being drawn before being given a color. And it needs to be drawn last. So let's move that down here. Reset, run. OK. 
but that puts the square on top of that circle. So I want to change that so that it's right in the middle. But remember the top of the square, top left, sorry, is its X and Y location. So I want it to be right there. And the grid is helping me a lot right now. So 150, 150 instead of 175, 175. So let's fix that. Reset, run. Easy as that. You got it. All right, finish, continue. And finally, the last bubble, bubble nine, we've got six challenges to work our way through. So let's draw a ladybug. Jumping into A here. So you can draw individual points on the screen using two commands. A point draws a single point on the screen and stroke weight controls how big that point is. Let's use these new blocks to draw a ladybug on the screen. The code has already been started for us. Let's see if we can finish it. And we're trying to make this, right? So run it. We've got two points already, but we want two more. All right, so let's use the point blocks to finish the code to make the picture. So we've got our point blocks down here, and we've got a comment block right here that says use the point block to finish the code so it matches the picture. All right, so our point blocks, let's grab them, where is it? There you are. We'll grab this one because we need to make two of them, reset, and run it. Now we've got two blocks kind of on top of each other at 200, 200. Let's show the grid. We want one about right here-ish, so we'll do 200, 210. You set run, and we want one about right there-ish, so we'll do like 190, 200 for this last one. I'll turn that grid off so you can see the result a little more clearly and those grid lines aren't in the way. But yeah, that looks perfect. Let's finish and continue. Let's do B here. Let's draw some dice. All right. So on this one, it wants a the three side of the dice to be visible. So let's run it. So on this one, I think we just need to use stroke weight because it looks like the, the dots or points are already in the right place. Stroke weight works just like uh, the fill does, and it'll impact the size of everything that comes after it. So let's take stroke weight. Let's put that on line four of the code. Reset run. Three is a little bit bigger. So the, if I increase this number to say six, right now my dots or points are getting bigger, but it doesn't seem big enough yet. So let's try a 10 stroke weight. Yeah, perfect. Now it looks really like dice. All right, finish, finish. And now we are looking at new blocks, no fill. All right, whoa, we've got a lot of ellipses being drawn. All right, so no fill. The no fill block makes it so created shapes have no fill, and we can use it to make really cool patterns. Read the code that makes the picture. Yep, I see that. We've got lots of ellipses and then use the no fill block to finish the code so it makes the picture. So no fill works just like fill. Let's grab no fill, throw it right at the top. So it's like, don't fill any of this stuff in, computer. Run, there you go, as easy as that. All we had to do is throw in one line of code. Now without that, if I run it, right, it kind of just looks like a pile of ellipses. Whereas with the no fill, boom. Now, just experimenting, right? If I put no fill down here, then it's only going to no fill these last ellipses below it. So you kind of get the idea of how that works. Get that back up to the top of my code, reset run, and we get that desired result. Finish, finish. And that puts us on face, challenge face. They really 
are very poetic with the titles of these. Uh, write a program that uses rectangle and ellipse and fill to create the fa a face out of shapes. An example is provided on the right, but you can make it however you want to. Draw a face that uses at least four shapes and uses at least two different colors. We can totally do that. So first, let's start with some blue eyes. Uh, let's do like sky blue, if that's a thing. And then for that, we're going to use ellipses. We need two of them for the eyes. Let's turn on the grid. Let's put the eyes at like uh, right here, 125, 125. Uh, X is going to change. Let's do like 225 and 125 because Y will remain the same. All right. And then working our way down the screen, let's do one more ellipse for the nose, just like they have it here. We'll do a circle nose and let's put the nose at 175, 175. Uh, nose red, just like in the picture. Reset run. Okay, I'm happy with that. And then let's put the mouth in here. All right. Let's see. How do we want to do the mouth? Uh, we're going to start with fill. We'll do like sea green. Maybe that's a color. We'll find out. Uh, not using ellipses. We're using rectangle blocks. So let's do kind of a big smile. Let's do the top of it at 90, 190. All right, let's try it light green. Does that work? Yeah, there we go. Perfect. Uh, next one, and let's see. I might have to move that over to recreate this. Let's, yeah, let's move that over. Let's do it all the way over here. Um, Seventy-five x. Reset run. All right. And then let's do right here where we've got 125, 220. And then the next one, we just add 50, 175, 220. I guess those two in there, and then last one uh, we're going to do at, we need to go 50 over again, so 225 and 190 to get it at the same level as that first one. Beautiful. Turn off the grid so we can see it better, and we did it. Uh, it's not exactly the same as this one, it's a little more squished but it works. I'm happy with it. Yummy food. Try using the new code you have learned to draw your favorite meal or food. We're going to leave that one alone. So if you guys want to do that one, fantastic. Go above and beyond. Really show off what you're, you're capable of. Also with the holiday one, we'll leave that uh, up to you guys if you want to do it. But I did four of the challenges. That's good enough, I think. That's great. Uh, these, these are more like just make your own thing, right? Get creative and have fun with it. So I'm going to end the video right there. That's lesson three, drawing and game lab updated to the 23-24 school year. Hope you guys have as much fun as I do with these coding lessons. See you for the next one.